All right, Nick Wright joining us, co-host First Things First. Boy, he's in a good mood. Well, kind of a good mood. The Bills thing. He's been outrageously funny on this. But for the way, did you look at my list right there? Did I? Did, yeah, you, can we talk about it for a second? Sure. Can we throw it back on there? Sure, let's throw it back I, on there. What, here's, so, listen, I, I think you did a great job with it. Uh, I tend to agree with J-Mac. I'd probably have found a spot for Debo Samuel on there, but that's nitpicking. Here's what I want to discuss. It, there's, to me, Nick Bosa's uh, tracking to be a Hall of Famer. Trent Williams, already a Hall of Famer. Jason Kelsey, already a Hall of Famer. R- Lane Johnson, already a Hall of Famer. Fred Warner, tracking towards being a Hall of Famer. George Kittle, tracking towards being a Hall of Famer. So in that top ten, you have three guys that if they never played another down, the three linemen, would already be Hall of Famers. Three guys in Bosa, Warner, and Kittle who are en route to being Hall of Famers if they stay healthy. And then Jalen's obviously got, you know, got to do it for a long, long time. And we are not – Kittle's – I'm sorry, Debo's not on there. The best safety in the league, Hufanga's not on there. This is why – the Niners can do what they've done. And and Philly's been excellent as well, obviously. They've been record-wise best team in the NFC. I said this on the show last week, why whether it's Trey Lance, Jimmy Garoppolo, or Brock Purdy, they can go to the Super Bowl. They are the only team in the league, Colin, that in every positional meeting group that you have during the week, you have a first-team All-Pro. You walk into the offensive line meeting, there's Trent Williams. You walk into the linebacker meeting, there's Fred Warner. You walk into the defensive backs meeting, there's Ufanga. You have Bosa in the D-line meeting. You have McCaffrey in the running backs meeting. You have Debo in the wide receivers meeting. What your pal John Lynch has done with this roster is breathtaking. They are just a spectacular football team. And if Brock Purdy doesn't mess it up for them, they're going to go to the Super Bowl as... You know, someone on this show predicted <laughs> on the show right now. Not whose name's on the show. But you've, yeah. you've reminded me like four weeks in a row. Yeah. Okay. Ch- yeah, Chiefs Niners was the preseason prediction. Looking pretty good. Go ahead. Sorry, I won't mention it again until next week. All right. So, the Mahomes thing, um, listen, he can still throw, but there is the extension of plays. It's a, one of the many yeah. things that makes him the best quarterback talent-wise I've ever seen. The extension of plays. It is very likely that he won't extend plays as well. How big of a concern is that to you? I mean, it's a concern. Uh, There's no doubt about it. The the Bengals are legit. The Bengals are the team, and Joe Burrow is the quarterback. Pardon me. That all year long, the media pretended the Bills and Josh Allen were. These are the actual rivals. Joe Burrow actually is the second-best quarterback in the league. And they are 3-0 and against Mahomes and the Chiefs in the last 13 months. Now, it should be mentioned, the Chiefs had leads going into the fourth quarter of all three of those games. Yes, they did. One of those games, the AFC Championship game, Mahomes uh, kind of short-wired uh, it, it mentally at halftime after he screwed up the end of the first half and played the first bad 30 minutes of playoff football of his career. So it's not as if the Chiefs can't line up with these guys. Right. And it is in Arrowhead for the fifth straight year, what was formerly known as the AFC Championship game, of course, now known as the Arrowhead Invitational. You can get your tickets for the 2024 <laughs> version now, actually. I, those hotel rooms are getting booked up. But, hey, listen, this is a, the, the line's about right. A pick is about right. I will say we've never seen the Chiefs in this spot being able to play the underdog card, yeah. being able to play the no-one-believes-in-us card. And Colin... Even Mahomes on one leg. Here would be after these playoffs. What happened with Josh Allen? With you know the the kind of emerging of Trevor Lawrence. Here's would be my updated NFL quarterback rankings, and I wonder what you think of them. <laughs> Mahomes one, Burrow two, Mahomes on one leg three. You're laughing. I, I, Mahomes played the second half on one leg uh, on s- this weekend. I would have taken Mahomes on one leg over what I saw from your Buffalo quarterback on two legs. Tell you that much right now. Well, you know, it's interesting. The comp, the comp for Allen is Big Ben. And when Brady and Manning were chopping up the AFC with their efficiency, their pre-snap excellence, Big Ben was good early, but, but he didn't win as much as we thought he should. And I look at Josh Allen. Is he Big Ben? 
wildly talented, sometimes too wild, uh, has a defensive coach. The league is pivoting to offense. I mean, Sean McDermott had a bad weekend. Bad. Yeah. Um, I know you have been very critical and taken a lot of heat for Josh Allen for years. Do you feel? Yeah. Do you feel today? You've been validated, yeah. right? Yeah. Like once again, <laughs> the, you know, that I'm the best in the world at sniffing out media <laughs> creations, you know, from the same studio that brought you don't believe in the Clippers and then the smash hit, the Nets are frauds, brings you, why are the Bills the favorites? What have they won? Yeah. What have they done? Why did the Bills get more credit for losing to the Chiefs than the Bengals got for beating the Chiefs in the playoffs? And by the way, for all our friends in upstate western New York that love to think, oh, if the coin flip goes our way last year, what? If the coin flip goes your way, what? You beat the Chiefs? Maybe. Well, the Chiefs, though, then went and lost to the team that lost the Super Bowl. Oh, it'd be different. That game would have been what? Cincinnati couldn't have come into Buffalo last year and done what? Dog walked you up and down the field like they did this weekend? I think they could. So you brought up a few comps. I've got to listen. You said Philip. You said Big Ben. If we're doing AFC quarterbacks of the 2000s, someone's got to prove to me he's not Philip Rivers, a guy that never made a past conference championship game, never won a league MVP, yeah. had a ton of talent, and had some decision making issues for a historically snake bitten franchise. You brought up Sean McDermott. Where did Sean McDermott come from? Carolina. Uh, Bills fans. Don't go looking around Cam Newton's football reference page right now because it'll make you a little concerned. Yeah. Big, strong, physically intimidating quarterback that runs too much, has some decision-making issues, but you're wowed by the talent. Yeah. So that's the Josh Allen part of this. The Josh Allen part of this is third and two deep shot, third and four deep shot, third and six deep shot, instead of moving the sticks, getting a first down, yeah. playing a precision offense. That's that part. Now the Sean McDermott part of it. Eight coaches this past week in Colin, seven of them offensive, one of them defensive. And the defensive-minded head coach is Sean McDermott. And since the Bills have been alleged contenders, here is how their seasons have ended. 2020, that defense allows 38 points to Kansas City. 2021, that defense cannot get off the field with 13 seconds left and allows 42 points to Kansas City. 2022, at home, in the snow, that defense, they only allowed 27, but Cincinnati did everything yeah. they wanted yeah. for three and a half hours. Yep. It felt like they could have scored 37 if they needed to. Yep. They, they, there was no resistance at all. And you spent a lot of draft capital and a lot of money on that, that defensive side of the ball, and they're not showing up. And as the great Marlo Stanfield once said, the price of the brick is going up for the Bills, Colin. Josh Allen's cap hit goes from $16 million to $41 million. Yep. Stephon Diggs goes from, I think, $13 million to $20 million. Von Miller's number goes way up. Jordan Poyer's a free agent. This was their moment. I'm going to give you one more insane Bills stat. This is via Scott Kazmar. Give him credit because I didn't know this. In all of NFL history, Colin, Every single coach-quarterback combo that has ever won a Super Bowl together, whether they win one or multiple, won their first Super Bowl together within five years of the partnership uh, of them uh, partnering up. So if you haven't won one within five years together, history says you won't. There were two coach-quarterback combos that entered year five this year without having won a Super Bowl. Lamar and Harbaugh, McDermott and Allen. Lamar and Harbaugh appear headed for divorce. I'm not saying McDerm McDermott and Allen are not headed for divorce right now, but I wonder what it's like a year from now if there's yeah. another disappointing season in Buffalo. Now, I said this. Um, in the divorce with Aaron and McCarthy, Aaron was the prince, and, uh, you know, McCarthy was the joker. Back-to-back 12-win -back seasons, 4-1 and one with Cooper Rush, number one red zone offense in the league, Missing his starter for five weeks, rebooting the offensive line, and didn't have Dalton Schultz or Gallup for, for some of it. They weren't really good until Thanksgiving, right? And I'm like, I when I watched Dallas this weekend, Trent Williams basically erases Micah Parsons. Tony Pollard hurt yep. at half. I can't blame McCarthy for this, Nick. I can't. San Francisco's better. 
at home and had a better second half. I hated the last play, but it was the last play. It felt more Dak than McCarthy to me. Agree or disagree? Uh, agree that it's more Dak than McCarthy. Disagree that he, he, if you remove the last play, McCarthy exactly bathed himself in glory. Colin, they punted on fourth and five from the, 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 yeah. on the plus side of the field on the 40-yard line. You can't do it. You can't do it. And if I told you going into that game that, that the Dallas Cowboy bingo card of Dak make head-scratching throws, check it off. Critical penalties at the worst possible time. Check it off. The hold on Kittle on third and goal that turned a field goal into a touchdown. And then just egregious clock management stuff. That McCarthy is not going to change his stripes on conservatism and clock management issues in these playoff games. It was the same script as last year. And I understand your point that, yeah, it's the last play. What are you going to do? Here's where I'm going to push it a little bit. We see all year long the best teams with the smartest offenses and the best quarterbacks. You give them 45 seconds, they might go down and score a touchdown. Back-to-back -back years, the Cowboys have had somewhere between 40 seconds and around 40 seconds, I should say, and forget going and scoring a touchdown. They couldn't even get in Hail Mary range. I'm not saying you got to complete the Hail Mary, but two straight years. Can you at least tr attempt the Hail Mary? Can you at least get to a place on the field where your team has a shot? That falls on the coach. And, yeah, they, 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 does it not feel to you a little bit, Colin? And people, you know, don't think of it this way, but that McCarthy and Dak could be the 2020s version of Marvin Lewis and Andy Dalton. Like, um, a coach is fine. Quarterback's fine. Yeah. They'll make the playoffs and never contend. Well, if you look at Dak and Zeke's cap hit, they're going to have to franchise somebody. They're the team along with Buffalo. The difference is Josh Allen, I think, is more talented than Dak. But I think Buffalo and Dallas have a reality, a cap reality, that it's, I, I would say likely they won't be as good next year. I think it's likely oh. they won't be. They just won't have as good a roster. And Philadelphia 100%. and the Niners don't pay their quarterback anything. So the Niners and Eagles are going to be the same teams next year. Purdy will have a year behind him. Jalen will buy for an MVP again. Those yep. teams aren't going anywhere. AFC, it's quarterback driven. NFC, well, it's roster driven. And I don't think Dallas matches up in a year. It's 100%. And listen, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the Chiefs one more time here. That's why the whole eight, what you described Buffalo is going through. Buffalo pushed their chips to the middle of the table. Denver traded away their draft picks. The Raiders traded away some draft picks. The Chargers went on an insane spending spree. They all did it this year while the Chiefs traded away their best player. The Bengals didn't go on an insane spending spree, but they're about to pay Burrow, they're about to pay Chase, and then they got to make a tough decision on T. Higgins. Can you pay him as well? I say all that to say this. If the Chiefs in that climate win the conference this year with no Tyreek, starting six rookies, and with Mahomes on one <laughs> leg, oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> I mean, start scheduling the parades, my friend. If you can't get them this year, no. when the next few years those teams are getting worse and the Chiefs are no cap problems, extra picks, ton of rookie contract guys, oh, boy, might be trouble for the old American football <laughs> conference, my friend. No, you're not wrong. This this is, honestly, when Mahomes gets hurt, you're like, this is the year to get him. That You had to give a up moment. a top corner, Tyreek Hill. We know Brett Veach drafts and develop. We, they draft and develop. They yeah. fixed an offensive line in a year. Buffalo couldn't fix theirs in six. It's still bad. Yep. Uh, Nick Wright, yep. first things first, after our show. Look at that suit. That suit costs more than our set. It's, it's discouraging. Uh, uh, listen, Colin, like you said, man, show with no budget. Did you see when we brought the snare drum with the oh, yeah, trumpets? We did that on a lark, Colin. Just lighting money on fire over here, man. You got to get over to the East Coast. Money spins differently than in L.A. I'll see you later, my friend. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.